Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? So I have a revelation coming from Holy Spirit. This revelation is coming from Psalms chapter 73. How good God is to the upright, the Lord to those who are clean of heart. But as for me, I almost lost my balance. My feet all but slipped because I was envious of the arrogant when I saw them prosper, though they were wicked. So the father is saying, someone knows that God is good to those children who are upright and to those children who are clean and pure at heart. They know that God is good to his children. But they are also saying that they became jealous. The father is saying that you became jealous and envious when you saw someone who was wicked and arrogant prospering and it almost caused you <clears throat> to lose your balance it almost caused you to slip because you were around this person you saw this person you are a child of god you are pure at heart and you have a clean heart and this is the way you are and this is the way you want to be but being around this person and you know it's the right way to be but being around this person it almost caused you to slip it almost caused you to lose your balance it almost <coughs> excuse me it almost caused you to do something that was outside of your morals, outside of God's standards, because you are looking at this person and you are seeing that they are prospering and you may not have much, but you are seeing that this person is prospering and they are arrogant and they are prospering, although they are, are wicked. For they are in no pain, their bodies are sound and sleek. They are free from the burdens of mortals, and they are not afflicted like the rest of men. So pride adorns them as a necklace, as a robe violence, as a robe violence enwraps them. Out of their craziness comes inequity. Their fancies overflow their hearts. They scoff and speak evil. Outrage from on high they threaten. They set their mountains in place of heaven. And their pronouncements roam the earth. So he brings... So the father is saying, you are looking at this person and you are seeing that they are not... They, you feel like they're not... Um, going through any pain they're not going through any su uh, suffering you feel like they in shape they look good they're not um, they don't have the same type of problems that you have if you feel like you feel like this person don't have any problems at all you feel like they're not afflicted you feel like this person has a lot of pride like they hold their head up high okay and this is someone who you feel like is um, this person may even be violent even. And they may uh, be someone who operates out of anger and rage. And sin. And their fantasies. So, and they also speak and yell mean and evil arrogant things out of their mouth and they threaten people and they make it known that they don't believe in Jesus Christ that they don't believe in God and they still have all that they have and they still do all that they do so he brings his people to such a pass that they have not even water and they say how does God know and is there any knowledge in the most high 
Such then are the wicked always carefree while they increase in their wealth. So this person may have even said to you, while um, they may have even said to you out of arrogancy and meanness and, and all the, the, the evil that they speak, they may have said, I got all of this. And I don't believe in God. I don't worship Jesus Christ. I, I don't do none of that. And I got all of this. Holding their head up, you know, just spewing out all types of crazy mess. And they're saying, you believe in God. You you believe in Jesus Christ. And you don't have this. You don't have that. You don't have this. Can, you know, this, this is, so. Uh, this is, and this is something that almost probably caused you to slip and lose your balance when this person started to speak to you in this way in this tone and they started to compare 555 and make it seem like as if they were stronger or had more strength than you or than your god because they look to be more accomplished they look to have more they looked um they look like they are happy they don't look like they're going through anything. They look healthy. Their body look good. They look carefree. They they they're very prideful. Okay? And and they do what they want to do. They operate out of their fantasies and out of their sins. And they talk the way they want to talk and they act how they want to act. Okay? And they're comparing their life to yours and the way you live in uh, being clean at heart. Um, worshiping the Lord, putting God first, and they're comparing your life to theirs, and they're making it's making it seem like, you know, that their their way of life is better, and yours is not, and this almost caused you to slip. This almost caused you to lose your footing, and this is why the Father tells us to be careful who you to watch who you're associating with. Who, who watch who you are placing yourself with or becoming one with. And this is why when he tells you or calls you to separate from a person, place, or thing, this is one of the reasons why. Because this person can cause you to stumble or to lose your footing and to cause you to feel like you are on the wrong path. And the path that they are on is a better path because it has gold and sprinkles and sparkles and glitter. Okay? Okay. It is, but in vain, I have kept my heart clean and washed my hands of as an innocent man. For I suffer affliction day to day and chastisement which each new dawn, with each new dawn. At, had I thought I will speak as they do, I had been false to the fellowship of your children. Though I had tried to understand it, seem to be too difficult this seemed to be too difficult it seemed to me too difficult till i entered the sanctuary of god and considered their final destiny so you are saying this the father saying you felt like you keep keeping your heart clean you keeping your hands clean as an innocent man okay and you suffer affliction day to day and you feel like the father chastises you for everything that you you might you know that you might do wrong and you saying but have but i but i don't act like them maybe if what if i spoke like them and acted how they act um then what would happen and, and you feel like it's hard for you to understand you get in trouble for doing the smallest things from god he chastises you you go through affliction you like why can't i do the smallest little thing but they over here acting a plum fool and nothing happens and you like this it, though i tried to understand this it seemed too difficult till i entered the sanctuary of god and considered their final destiny okay you don't understand how come you get in trouble for the smallest little thing you do lord jesus i do I can't even do this. Listen, look, look what they do it. <laughs> you like it. Well, at least I can do it. The Lord says, no, you cannot. No, you cannot. The father is saying um, that scripture where, where people see two people from far off. And how is they how are they supposed to tell to the, the difference of two fools? If you're doing the same thing that they're doing, it doesn't matter how small or whether you do it a lot or, or whatever. The father says, how is he? How are people supposed to tell you apart from this person from a distance? 
not up close but from a distance how the fuck how is people supposed to tell you apart okay and i was about to say how is the fathers of uh, uh supposed to be able to tell you apart but that's just a um example like of why the father's saying you can't um do what everybody else is doing or what you see other people doing and this is why you get in trouble and he pulled real you right back on in and you know it was the hand of god that was like at at nope you know better okay so and this is verse 17 till i entered the sanctuary of god and considered their final destiny so the father is going to explain to you what their final destiny is Okay, and this scripture is entitled, The False Happiness of the Wicked. First of all, the Father wants you to know that they are not really happy. This is a false happiness. This is something that they are pretending to achieve or that they have achieved. It's something that they want, but they haven't achieved happiness. This is someone, who, they're not as happy as you think they are. They are not as happy as they appear to be. The father wants you to know first and foremost that this is a false happiness. What you see with your very own eyes <laughs> is false happiness. It's false. It's not real. What's that? Believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. What you see, what you are looking at when you look at that person, it is not even real. It is false. It is pretend. Everything about that person is fake. That's what the father wants you to know first and foremost. You may think they're not going through nothing. They're going through everything. And this is why they're so angry. This is why they are so evil. Confirmation. Okay. <laughs> this is why they're so angry. This is why they're so evil. This is why they want, this is why they blow up at every little thing or nothing. This is why they spew out evil with their mouth because that's what's in their heart. What's in your heart comes out of your mouth. If they were happy, then they would say, you know, happy things, happy thoughts. <laughs> but they're not happy. So they, and, and happiness is not in their heart. So they can't give you happiness. They can only give you what's in their heart. And that's what they're feeling. And so they give you what they feel. So no... What comes out of a person's mouth is what's inside of a person's heart. Despite what you see with your eyes, despite what you're looking at, despite the the glitter and the glam and the gold and the purses and the and the um the nice shoes, the nice clothes, the trips, the boats, the cars, despite seeing all of that, what's in this person's heart? What comes out of their mouth? Then you'll know how do they how they really feel. Pay attention to how this person speaks. What are they saying? Then you'll know if they're really happy. Not by what they have, not by what they possess. This person is trying to cause you to slip. Even though you don't have as much as they have, they're trying to cause you to slip because they see that you are happy. And they're trying, um, misery loves company. And this person wants you to be miserable. And this is why they're trying to, trying to cause you to slip. They're trying to cause you to stumble. That's why they're trying to compare your lifestyles because that's all they have is their possessions, their materials. And so they're trying to compare that to what you don't have. But you're happy despite um, you not being able to do or live the life that they're living. You're happier than they are. And they know that. You speak like you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you talk like you are. You don't speak evil. You don't spew evil out of your mouth. You're not full of rage. It's not, you're not consumed in it. It, it is, you're not like a tornado when you come around people. You don't make people feel inferior or like they are not enough or they should choose a different path. You set them indeed on a slippery road. You hurl them down to ruin. How suddenly they are made desolate. They are completely wasted away amid horrors. 
as they were the dream of one who had awakened. O oh Lord, so will you when you will when you arise. Set at naught these phantoms, because my heart was embittered and my soul was pierced. I was stupid and understood not. I was like a brute beast in your presence. So the father is saying that one day you will see, you will come to see what, why he allowed this person to act the way they wanted to act, why he allowed them to do whatever it was that they were doing for so long. He says, it will be as if this person was living a dream and then all of a sudden woke up. That's how it's going to be. Like somebody was living their dream life and then all of a sudden they just woke up and it was not real. It was uh, like, it was fake. That's how it's going to be. They're going to wake up one day and, and realize that every, that this is a fake habitat. They're going to realize that no, this is not where I'm supposed to be. This is not where I belong. How did I, how did I even get here? How did I, how, how was I here for so long? When did I get here? When did the, was I here my whole life? Have I always been this way? They're going to start trying to go back and think how they got to this point. At what point did they cross over and get here? Or have they always been fake? One day they're going to wake up and they're going to look at themselves and they're going to look around them. And they're going to realize everything about them and everything around them is fake. Nothing is real. Nothing is real. And they're not going to like it. You set them indeed on a slippery road. You hurled them down to ruin. How suddenly they were made desolate. This is going to happen quickly. When it's going to be like they, like, like the father said, like they just woke up from a dream. All of a sudden they just going to wake up. Ain't no telling how long they've been asleep. In his fantasy world. The father said this is someone who dwells in their fantasies and in, in, in their sin. They dwell in their fantasies and in their sin. They live in it. This is somebody who's been in this for a while. And one day they just going to wake up. And it's going to hit them hard. Ruin and emptiness. Void. Wasteful living. They might even be afraid, scared, 1811. They might even be afraid, scared of the life they live, the life they've been living. I hear that project pack again, the life we live. They think it's beautiful now. Or they thought it was beautiful until they wake up. Now I'm hearing easy E. Everything don't happen the way you think it's going to happen. Everything don't happen the way you think it's going to happen. <sighs> but um, you are someone who allowed your heart to become bitter, angry, and resentful. And you allow for your soul to be hurt because of you comparing yourself to this person, your life to this person's life. And you will get to a point where, okay, now I feel stupid because I didn't understand. And I was, I was acting crazy in the presence of the Lord asking why da, 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 why I can't do this and why I can't do that I'm acting all crazy in the, in the presence of the Lord asking him why I can't sin why I can't live out my fantasies why I can't talk evil <laughs> they doing it why I get in trouble when I do it I'm all in front of the Lord talking crazy and acting crazy because I understood not 
And now I feel I feel stupid. Now I feel crazy. Yet with you I shall always be with you. Yet with you I shall always be. You have hold on my right hand. With your counsel you guide me. And in the end you will receive me in glory. Whom else have I in heaven? And when I am with you, the earth delights me not. Though my flesh and my heart waste away, God is my rock. God is the rock of my heart and my portion. For indeed, they who withdraw from you perish. You destroy everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, to be near God is my good. To make the Lord God my refuge, I shall declare your I shall declare all your works and the gates of the daughter of Zion. So you are or you will come into understanding if you have not already that the Father is someone who is always going to be with you. He is someone who is always going to hold your hand. He is someone who is always going to counsel and guide you. You are, you know that in the end that you will represent God's glory. You will represent his good achievement, a good thing that he has done. And you know this. You know that the Father loves you. And because the Father loves you, there will be a lot of people on earth who hate you simply because the Father loves you and they hate him. They hate Christ. They hate what we represent. So when the Father loves you, there will be people who hate you simply because he loves you and because you belong to him, 22, 22, because you are one, because you are his bride, because you are his daughter, because you are a princess of the most high God. People will hate that. And that's their problem. But people will, they, they won't like you for, for being a princess. They won't like you for being a prince. They won't like you for being a brother in Christ. A sister in Christ. Not a real one anyway. I mean, it's a lot of fake ones out there. You know what I'm saying? But the real ones. And although you know that your flesh and your heart may sometimes won't other things because just because we are godly people godly men and women it does not mean that we lose the desires that we once had those desires are still there we just have to be strong enough to overcome them strong enough to say no to them the thoughts still come up but you have to be strong enough to rebuke them to find something else to do it doesn't mean that we are perfect. It just means that we are strong and we fight to overcome the flesh and sometimes what's in our heart daily. Because there are people that we love that we want to be close to, that we want to speak to. That's in our heart. There are people that you want to be with intimately, your flesh. And you have to overcome that daily. You don't just get over it one day and, it, and you don't feel it no more. You don't desire it no more. It can happen in, in, within time, eventually. But it's not to say that the thought won't come creep back up. So, though your flesh and your heart may waste away at times, there are things that you may want to do. You know that God is my rock. God is the rock of my heart and my portion forever. You know that the Father has the power to help you overcome 
what is what those things are that is in your heart. God knows our hearts. He knows every last single one of our hearts. He knows those people that we love, that we are connected to, that are no good for us. That's why the Father tells us to guard our heart. And God is the rock of my heart and my portion forever. So the Father will help you to overcome those things that are in your heart. He will help you to protect yourself. Like I say, it's a fight every single day. None of us are perfect. But you are someone who knows this about your heart, about your flesh, because you are one with God. And you know that is, although you feel these things and you feel this way, it's not okay for you to go out and act on it. And you know the Father helps you give, give, the Father helps you and gives you the power to help you fight rebuke and overcome those wants, needs, and desires that are not good for you, that cause you to sin. For indeed, those who withdraw from you perish. You destroy anyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me to be near God is my good. To make the Lord God my refuge, I should declare all your words in the gates of the daughter of Zion. You know that if you were to part from God, to take yourself away from God, that you would perish. That would be the end of you. I don't know if you know, but I know. (laughs) The only reason I'm alive right now today is because of the Lord thy God, my Father, my Savior, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and my Holy Spirit. I know if it wasn't for them, plenty of people don't try to take me out here on, on several occasions. But I'm still standing, 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 standing. And it's all because of the glory of God. Because he loves me and I love him. And I know, you know what I'm saying? We here. And so do you. You know. Y'all here. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And that's what the Father knows. And you know that if you were to separate yourself from the Father, that you would perish. You know, you're someone who's like, I can't do anything without the Father. I need him. You know this. And so you also know that anyone who has been unfaithful to the Father has been destroyed. They have met a ruin. Okay? You know that God is good for you. And that God is good. You know that he is your father and that he is your safe place. And you want to declare all his words at the gate for his daughters. So they know God is good and he is a safe place. Especially, I mean, not especially for his daughters. I mean, that's how I feel because I'm a baby girl. You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Because I'm a baby girl. But it's a safe place for his men, too. It's a safe place for the... But I'm, I, you know, I speak for the, from a woman's point of view. And, you know, we just know that God is a safe place. I know that God is a safe place. And if you don't know, you better find... You better ask somebody. You know what I'm saying? He is a safe place and he is a good, a good father, a good God. You know? And he just wants you to... This is a message that the father just basically wants you to know that he understands and he heard you. But he also wants you to know that this is someone, whoever you are looking at, whoever you are with, this is someone who is trying to cause you to stumble. Okay, they are trying to cause you to stumble. They know that you are pure at heart. They know that um, you love and trust the Lord and they're trying to get you to go outside of that boundary. They're trying to get you to do wrong. They're trying to get you to fall. They're trying to get you to stumble. And you almost did. You almost did lose your footing. You almost did stumble, but you didn't. Because what? The Father is the rock of our heart. And he knows what's in our hearts. And he gives us the power and the authority to overcome these situations when you are divinely connected to him. So 
the father says you may feel you know might feel a little stupid because you didn't understand and you acted you know acted up in the presence of the father with your questions why i can't why i always gotta get in trouble because i didn't because you his child and you belong to him okay and his kids, we 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 get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can't just be out here doing what we want to do. You know what I'm saying? But the father just wants you to know that this person is living a life that is a, a, a fake, and they are going to wake up from this dream, and it is going to hit them. One day, it is going to hit them just like like that. They're gonna wake up, and they're gonna realize that the life they live in is not even real. It's not even real. And um, that's the message. The father, do, and the father, just be careful who you um, associate yourself with and who you're becoming one with and who you're taking advice from and who you listening to. Listening to what people are actually saying because that's what's in their heart. You see what I'm saying? Listen to what they're saying because that's what's in their heart and that's what they're being led by. So make sure when people speak, listen. Don't just hear them. Listen and see if it's coming from a, a a healthy place or an unhealthy place. And you can see how where the, how this person is operating. And, you know, move on from there. That's the message, y'all. Peace. Make good decisions with good people. Okay? Don't listen to everybody. Everybody ain't for you. More than half are against you. Okay? Use your own mind your own mind and stay one with Christ and let him be led and guided by him and not by people because people will try to get you and cause you to fall and stumble simply and just because they see you in a high place and you might not even know that these people see you in a high place because like I say the father say you might not see yourself as having much and as far as it comes to possessions and materials, but people see you in a high place. And this is why they're trying to get you to fall and stumble. And it doesn't seem like they're trying to get you to fall and stumble because it seems like they're trying to raise you up, get you more possessions, get you more money. But reality, this is a stumble. This is a falling, a falling block for you because it's something that's trying to get you to operate out of sin, out of fantasy out of evil, out of resentment, out of bitterness. Not out of hope, not out of love, not out of truth. Because this, again, this is someone who is fake. That everything around them is fake. And they're not happy. And that's the message. So just be careful you look at people and they smiling and they got everything and it's just like I don't know why the father is placing this on my heart so heavy but they smiling they got everything they got the they got the um designer they got the name brand clothes shoes cars houses they got everything when you look at them and it, it but they're not happy they operate out of their fantasies they're operating out of sin and they still not happy they got money they still not happy that's why they so angry but anyway that's the message that's the message y'all just be careful who you take advice from and listen to what they saying you really have to listen to what people are saying and make sure you're not being gaslit people will really try to gaslight you and make you feel like what you're saying is wrong and what they're saying is right. Or they'll try to convince you to believe what it is that they are saying. Some some kind of way. But hold on to what you know is right. Hold on to love. I heard that song. Hold on to love. Okay, hold on to God, hold on to love. Okay, that's it, y'all. I'm for real this time because I think I don't said it like 10 times, but for real, that's it. Peace. <laughs>